Dangerous Minds here. I have just found a transcript by Dr. Vernon Coleman, who elucidates my thoughts so much better than I can. I am going to put it to a video. Just imagine me as the old man in a chair reading a transcript. His thoughts are so similar to mine on this subject. And because obviously we both follow closely what's going on in the world and have done for decades, we're both reaching the same conclusions. So why rewrite something that's perfectly written? And it echoes my thoughts in my zombie video that I wrote, which I will be expanding on, by the way, because I'm so sick of zombies. And an aside, I've noticed Dr. Coleman calling them zombies as well. So that's just an interesting second correlation. Dr. Coleman's article is entitled, The Screw is Tightening. It begins. Oh, he wrote it around about the 15th of July. That's when it was published, as far as I know. The number of people dying from coronavirus is falling fast, and yet the screw is tightening everywhere. In many countries, death totals are lower than they usually are at this time of year. Yet you would have had to have your skull scooped out and filled with concrete not to realise that there is something really sinister and evil going on. I concur. The fear being promoted with such enthusiasm is clearly nothing to do with a fairly ordinary virus and everything to do with the ambitions of those who want a world government and total control over every aspect of our lives. Everywhere I look, I see evidence that attempts are still being made to push the fear and to terrify people. Funnily enough, Dr. Coleman, so do I. He then goes on to talk about the testing program. The testing program shows that more and more people have to have had the virus or indeed almost everyone who is tested seems to have a positive result. Actually, that isn't so surprising because it seems that some tests ping positive if you've had the flu or a cold or the flu vaccination in the last decade. It probably shows positive if you've ever, ever sneezed. Apparently, one test shows positive when tested on a goat. The test was even positive when tried on a papaya fruit. That's what I highlighted from Dr. Magafuli from Tanzania a few months ago. So Dr. Vernon's on to that as well. Still, the test is proving very useful to those who want to destroy the country and my country and the US and a whole bunch of other countries so that the UN can rebuild it the way they want to in accordance to Agenda 21. And so around the world, towns are being closed down and the citizens punished for absolutely no good reason at all. If anyone in government were interested in the science, they would know that lockdowns don't work. They were never going to work. They were always a terrible idea. I absolutely agree. They never made any sense to me at all. They came out of Ferguson, of course. Ferguson was the Imperial College guy in the UK. Now, he came out with the model, but you can bet he was paid by someone behind the scenes and his models never work. Dr. Vernon goes on. They resulted in all the care home deaths, they stopped people developing immunity, they made people depressed and unhealthy, and they will result in millions of entirely unnecessary deaths around the world, and they are wrecking the economy. We are constantly being promised the vaccine as though it were some holy grail. I agree, totally. He goes on, my position on vaccination is very simple. I am pro-truth, and I am as am I, by the way. And I expect, or rather demand, that if I am given a vaccine or drug, that it will have been properly tested beforehand and that the risk-benefit ratio will have been properly investigated. Sadly, the evidence shows clearly that the risks far outweigh the benefits. After years of observation, I am convinced that there is one big difference between the people who are devoted to vaccination at all costs and those who are concerned about its safety and effectiveness. Most of those in the first group 
have never done any research at all, whereas most of those in the second group, the cautious doubters, have done a good deal of research, are alarmed by what they have seen and know what they are talking about. Sadly, many doctors know very little about vaccines and vaccinations, except that is an extremely profitable activity. The average GP can make many thousands of pounds, Dr. Vernon is from the UK, a year by giving injections. In practice, of course, she or he doesn't have to give the injections. A nurse or assistant does that. And nurses, health visitors and so on know only the propaganda, I fear. How many know that the UK government has to pay out so much money to the parents of children damaged by vaccines that they have a fixed fee of £120,000 per severely damaged child. In the United States, the government has paid out over $4 billion in vaccine injuries. Notice the government has paid it out, as I highlighted in one of my other videos. That money has been paid on behalf of 18,000 individuals. That's a lot of money for governments to pay out for treatments that are supposed to be perfectly safe. I bet you won't read that in the Daily Mail or The Guardian or see it on the BBC, Dr Vernon states. They have destroyed our education system with the lockdowns and the social distancing and a whole generation of children has been indoctrinated into fear. And this is only in a few months. I predict huge mental health problems for two whole generations at the very least. I feared for this generation, Dr. Vernon expands that to at least two generations. That's terrifying. There are still some innocent souls who believe that the economy will bounce back in a few months. Financial commentators blithely tell us that everything will be fine long before Christmas. Yeah, I'd like to see that. The, those dunderheads probably still believe in the tooth fairy because they clearly have no idea how much damage has already been done. They have no idea how much damage is continuing to be done by social distancing and so on. I suspect they have no idea how businesses are run and they appear to have no idea they are being manipulated just as we are. Or maybe they are part of the plan to deceive and to manipulate, to oppress and to misinform. This is why I want to do a series that highlights manipulating characters. I've already started it with the succubus and it's so important to understand these characters. A lot of people think they do, but they don't. They, they oh, you can see somebody in front of the TV who's killed however many people and think, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> No, 99% of people who think they know a manipulative character have no clue that they deal with them every day and they wouldn't even know. So they could even be their closest friends and they wouldn't even know. Or maybe they are part of the plan to deceive and to manipulate, to oppress and to misinform. But I doubt that. I think many of those who seem to be in charge are acting blind. They are panicking and have no idea what is going on. Some are continuing with stale and stupid arguments because they are frightened to admit they got it all wrong, that the whole coronavirus story has been wildly exaggerated. At one point, our Prime Minister here in Australia looked like that he was waking up to it when the figures dawned on him and he was going to turn it around, but he's gone right back. So th that moment of clarity that he had has gone again and Victoria has now become the focal point of our fear that is now running again rampant through our country. A lot of people are awake. You go down to the supermarkets or whatever, people are shaking hands, people are just acting normal. There's a few that are walking around with masks and social distancing, but most people, most people are just ignoring the whole thing. 
So that's at least refreshing for here. But that doesn't matter because the government can do anything they want at any time. So we'll see what happens. And Dr Vernon goes on. I am convinced that many of the politicians in government have absolutely no idea what is going on. And I'm equally convinced that there are some advisors who know exactly what's going on. I also suspect that a former Prime Minister whom I won't name, other than to say his first name is Tony, his second name begins with B, and he is widely known as Britain's most famous war criminal, knows a good many of these people who know exactly what is happening and the role of the United Nations. Yes, that would have been Bush Jr's cohort. If there is anyone in the world who trusts Blair, they should be locked up for their safety and for ours. <laughs> I would agree. Our strings are being pulled by the people behind the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the Global Economic Forum, and so on. They certainly are. And it is becoming clear that their agenda are no longer quite so hidden. They haven't been hidden for a while, I would suggest, because they know people are so zombified that it doesn't matter what they do, those people aren't going to wake up. They're fully enthralled by the spell of the Pied Piper. Dr. Vernon goes on. They plan to take over the world to control our bodies, our minds, in every conceivable way. I'm going to try to do a series that gives people who doubt this or don't understand this type of thinking a little bit of clarity. But unless you have an aha moment and you truly understand these people, it's, I do realise it's very hard to make that leap. But once you make that leap, everything becomes so clear. It's not possible to unsee it. It's funny, you get the side that can't see it, but then as soon as you can see it and you step to the other side, it, everything makes sense and you see it so clearly and you, you can't unsee it. And likely you wonder why you haven't seen it before. Dr. Vernon goes on. I am convinced that a small chunk of rich and powerful people planned this disaster and are organising things so as to make our current lives as difficult as possible so that they can break us. They are using old psychological tricks to wear us down. Absolutely. I see them. I see all the psychological tricks so clearly. It's very easy to see if you understand the psychology. This is why psychology is so important. This is why Dangerous Minds Channel is devoted to psychology because it is by understanding the psychology of these archetypes that you can break through to see what's going on. Dr. Vernon then goes on. If you haven't watched, then do please either watch my video on brainwashing or read the transcript on my website. I should put that video up. The same people who were pulling the strings of the global warming nutters and hiding in the background are now controlling the demonstrations and the riots, the interracial conflict and the attempts to eradicate our national histories. This is what these people do and they have done it for millennia. They just wipe out history and then put their own version in. And that's why understanding what true history is and how the pieces fit together is so important. Dr. Vernon goes on. They are doing everything to destroy the world we know so that they can recreate things to their advantage. And this is what they have done over and over and over again for at least 4,000 years. I am fully aware, aware that saying this will ensure that the trolls will have a field day, Dr. Vernon says. Well, if they had the brains and the courage, I would happily debate with them. Unfortunately, they don't have the brains or the courage, and I'm banned from all mainstream media anyway, largely because of my views on vaccination 
and drug companies. And while mentioning a debate, let me just repeat my challenge to Dr. Witty, the British government chief medical officer. I will happily debate vaccination with Dr. Witty, Dr. Vernon says, live on national television or radio. This would give the establishment a chance to destroy publicly the fears that I have and that many others share about the safety and effectiveness of vaccinations. But Dr. Witty won't debate, of course, and you can read into that whatever you like. There are, of course, many people who say there never was a virus and that all we are seeing is the usual standard flu. Certainly the infection rate and the death rates are similar to those of a fairly ordinary flu. Indeed, remove the care home deaths and this is a very mild flu attack. But I don't think any of that really matters very much in practical terms. The only thing that matters at the moment is that a mild problem has been willfully exaggerated. Fear has been created and our lives have been totally disrupted. When we finally extricate ourselves from this mess, which we will, there will have to be a good many questions about who did what and why. I hope Dr. Vernon's right on that. I can see them just sweeping it under the carpet and making up all sorts of other bullshit justifications. But let's hope, let's hope questions are asked and answered. I personally can't see it, but Dr. Vernon says he's hopeful that it will happen. To see Ferguson in court. I can't see that, Dr. Vernon, I'm sorry. Wish I could. Dr. Vernon goes on. His model was clearly as much a load of rubbish as others he's produced over the years and i would like to see in court the people who accepted ferguson's predictions without submitting them to any sort of peer review this is the same predictions that were predicting millions of deaths everywhere that as we know just didn't happen but our immediate need is to understand the tactics and strategy of the people behind the united nations and that's exactly what we here at Dangerous Minds are trying to do. The World Health Organization and the other bad organizations, we need to know who they are, what they are trying to do and precisely what they want. Here at Dangerous Minds, we believe the most important thing is to understand the archetypes. And that's what we're going to try to bring to you is to understand the archetypes behind this. This is what all the esoteric knowledge, the old wisdom teaches, the archetypes of these people that we need to understand in order to stop being consistently led over the edge by them and hence them winning and propagating their agenda. They are by far in the minority, but unfortunately most of the people have been zombified and they just follow them. They do not understand the principles of the archetypes of the old wisdom because the old wisdom has been hidden and deliberately skewed so as we don't understand it. Because they know if we understand it, they won't be able to do these things to us over and over again because we will be awake we will laugh at them and we will say the emperor has no clothes unless the crowds perceive them and go along with the notion that he does have clothes dr vernon goes on let us not forget we are fighting a war in a war information is the most vital commodity there is a time to reread among others this is a time to reread, among others, Machiavelli's The Prince Sun Tzu's The Art of War and Emperor Napoleon's Thoughts on Strategy and Tactics. I've dug out both copies of all three, Dr. Vernon says. I would also suggest looking at Goebbels and understanding what he understood about manipulating perception of the mind because that's their biggest template of manipulation. And there endeth Dr. Vernon's transcript.